Usually I do children's stories that are more fun, <laughs> uh, usually that have to do with the human body or animals. And today, I've actually through the last couple of weeks and through camp meeting, I had been struggling with a few things personally. So I'm going to be using myself as an example today for the children's story. Um, Anyways, who knows what knowledge means? I know this is small writing, but I have a lot to put on the board. Without reading it, can you tell me what knowledge means to you? Adults, too. It's not just for the kids. Gary, did I leave my paper up there? I need it. Can you? I'm so sorry. Lots of editing. <laughs> Thank you. I looked up knowledge, and basic knowledge, according to Merriam Webster, is understanding, grasp, comprehension, mastery, absorption. Now we're thinking of spiritual applications here. Understanding, if you look, it's the same thing comprehension, grasp, mastery, and absorption. I've been struggling with the word unity and practical. It seems like as adults, we have the knowledge and the understanding. So this would equal adult. Because we're not children anymore, right? So as an adult, we also would classify this as meat. In the term and biblical principles that we have meat, not milk, correct? Because deep understanding and deep knowledge goes way beyond milk. Because this is what we graduate to or should as adults. So I've got a question for you. If understanding, grasp, comprehension, mastery, absorption, and understanding knowledge equals adult and me. Now this is my take on it and my understanding in the last two weeks because I've been very confused. What I realize is what's the opposite of knowledge and understanding? Ah, thank you, Gary. So, we're going to put over here, ignorance. Now, you're asking me why is it on the same line as the opposite. What do you want me to do, Roberto? Cut the equal sign. No, cut the equal sign. Okay, there. This way it's... Uh... Yes, thank you. I'm new at this. So, this equals ignorance to me. Well, that's a contradiction of knowledge and understanding, Right? But is it? Because with knowledge and understanding usually comes ignorance with adults, especially with me. Because even though we have the meat when we're adults, usually ignorance follows because we don't know how to act practically. Does that make sense? We apply this, but we don't apply it practically. We don't apply it in our actions, and I'll give you a good example who would fall into this category. Nicodemus. And in John, I'm going to read you something real quick here. In John 3, 1 through 7, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, or teacher, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born? He is old. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Or born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Nicodemus was the head of the Jews and the Pharisees. But yet, wasn't he still ignorant? Because you know why? Because he, didn't underst he understood the meat. 
but he didn't understand the practical, which equals milk. Now, the definition of practical. I hope I'm not running out of time, time Gary. Okay. Sorry about my writing here. I know you can't read my writing, so I'll read it to you. Practical of or concerned with the actual doing or use of something rather than with theory and ideas. Now practical means realistic, sensible, and this is the one that I like and that we'll be talking about a little bit, down to earth. Because in my past I was very arrogant. I wasn't too down to earth at all. And I definitely, which I find fascinating, the next one is grounded. Down to earth and grounded. Oh, sorry, Gary. This. So this is what practical means. <clears throat> so how do we combine knowledge understanding with the practical Understand. Nicodemus hadn't figured that out yet. He was still ignorant because he didn't know how he could become a child again. And Jason was ignorant like that also. There's all kinds of knowledge and meat out there, but I'm encouraging us today that we need to get back down to earth and be grounded, which would be in Christ which is our chief cornerstone. That's part of it. You know the wise men that built his house upon the rock? Build house. Thank you, Gary. We were headed there. But since you said it, we'll leave it there. So basically, to come down to earth and be grounded... We've got to become children again. And that's what Christ was trying to teach Nicodemus. And I believe that's what I'm trying to be taught right now because I've had a lot of sleepless nights that you just tell someone to do something under knowledge and understanding. But do we live by the practical? I know you've heard of the term, actions speak louder than words. I've got written down for myself, less talking more action. And this has been a hard concept for me because I have some knowledge and understanding, but the practical is not there. The action's not there sometimes. So I want to come back to earth. I want to become grounded. I want to become as Christ. I want to become a child again. It's okay to have the meat, but before you can burn, build your foundation, you have to have the milk. And that equals relationship. And how do we get the relationship in a practical? That's a good question. I'm still working on it. But I do understand one thing, that in order to have unity, because this is being discussed a lot, and it's been brought to my attention over camp meeting. How do I define unity? Because this all ties together. Because unity cannot happen if we don't have milk first. 
So what I'm encouraging each and every one of us, including myself, that in order to move forward with unity, first it has to start in the home. It has to start with me as a husband in my home since there's a wife and there's two kids. I've failed in that department over the years, and I'm trying to rectify that now. But a lot of damage has been done. But in order for me to have unity in my home, I have to have Christ in my heart. Not this. I'm not ready for that. So for me, unity starts in the home first before it can be on a bigger scale. If we want to unify one with another, then we need to be converted first in our homes. We need to unify personally each and every one of us in our homes and be unified in Christ. When we're unified at home and in Christ, then we won't be asking for unification meetings because we'll automatically be unified. Thank you. I'll have a quick word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so blessed that we can come to you again. Father, we thank you so much for giving your beloved Son to us, Father. You know each and every heart that's in here, Father. Please put a blessing upon their home. Please help us to reevaluate and reexamine our lives, Father, that we may enter the kingdom with you, Father, because the most important thing is to be unified in you first, Father, like you were, I mean, unified in you, Christ, like you were with your Father. Father, please help us to accomplish these things. Help us to put self aside and let us start having that upper room experience. In your name I pray, amen.